Also, the battle between Governor Cooper and the Republican-led General Assembly, it escalated today. For the third time, Cooper's pick to lead the Department of Military and Veterans Affairs didn't show up for his Senate confirmation hearing. But this time, the Republicans had a response ready for him. Our Kelly Kennedy has the story. At this point, many Republican senators are fed up, calling Hall's failure to show up disrespectful and unacceptable. So now they're going a step further to try to force him to show up at the next hearing. For the third time, Larry Hall's chair was empty at the Senate hearing. It is unacceptable. They're now going to a fourth meeting to ask if they would do us the privilege of showing up and asking and answering some questions. The Senate passed a motion to subpoena Larry Hall to show up at a confirmation hearing on March 2nd. He will be bound to uphold that oath and comply with the subpoena. Even the governor, even if the governor acts like Richard Nixon and orders him to break the law. Governor Cooper sued legislative leaders over a law they approved before he took office, requiring the Senate to confirm each member of his cabinet. Last week, a three-judge panel refused to block the enforcement of that law until a hearing that's set for March 7th. Senator Floyd McKissick says he believes the Senate should hold off on any confirmation hearings until the court rules on whether it's constitutional. I don't know who is going to prevail, and I would not try to sit there and try to read the tea leaves and, and try to come up with which way it will ultimately be decided. But I do believe we are wasting our time. We did reach out to the governor's office, which sent us a statement saying, in part, it's disappointing that this committee, which has ignored the findings of a court order by meeting prematurely, would engage in this political charade when there's so much to focus on repealing HB2 and raising teacher pay. The subpoena calls for Hall to be at a confirmation hearing on March 2nd at 11 a.m. That's five days before judges are set to vote on whether those hearings are constitutional. Reporting from the General Assembly, Kelly Kennedy, CBS North Carolina.